Welcome to another ESM Academy training video for Ortho Analyzer. In this video I want to introduce you to the model set compare functionality within the software. We use this functionality for aligning cases, aligning pre-treatment and post-treatment cases on top of each other, superimposing them so we can gauge and judge how much uh, movement and what kind of movement has occurred during orthodontic treatment. On the left hand side of the screen we've got a toolbar for model set compare and the first icon I'm going to click on is the model set compare, the model compare set uh, option. The software presents to me a list of all of the other model sets that are available for this particular patient. So I'm going to select case number two. And well, let me zoom out to take a, a frontal view. And we can see that we've now got two sets of models on screen. If I open them up, take an occlusal view, we can see we've got a pre-treatment and post-treatment case. A new window has appeared here which allows me to take a dual view or a single view. A dual view allows me to view the two cases side by side or a single view allows me to see them sitting on top of each other. The orientation, the alignment, the uh, positioning of these two cases are purely based on how they were scanned and how they, the virtual base was applied and so on. So there is no definitive uh, superimposition or alignment present at this moment. So that's our next task. I'm going to rely on this icon, the maxillary model registration icon. So it's like a big old magnet. We click on it and this is going to allow us to superimpose the two upper arches. For simplicity, I'm going to go back to the dual view and I'll bring the models central. And a window has appeared uh, at the bottom left hand side of the screen. It's giving me three options. We can use a surface one point registration, a surface three point registration, or a direct three point registration. There's three different techniques that the software will use or uh, allows us to use to define commonality, to define what points on the models are stable. What points do we want to use for registration? Obviously, because we've got pre and post treatment uh, models on screen, well, then the, there will be certain aspects of this case that have changed during the course of orthodontic treatment, and there will be other aspects of the case that have not changed. And as a clinician, as a researcher, it's up to us to identify, well, which parts are stable and which parts are reliable. Now, my role here is just to illustrate how the tools can be used and, and try to identify the differences between them so uh, it, it assists you in making the right decision as you're aligning your own cases. So if firstly we'll re relate to or refer to the direct three-point option. The software is going to require us to select three discrete landmarks on each of the two arches. So let's go ahead and, and do that. So I'm going to select three points to the best of my ability I select a point here, a point here, I'll pick a point on the palatal rugae, and a point here, and here. And once I click preview, the software will now move the compare case, reorientate it, and the software is now trying to get each one of those three landmarks as best it can aligned with the three landmarks on the reference case. And if I go back to a single view, you can now see how the software has tried to do that. It's tried to align the point in the palatal rugae. It's tried to align the point on this molar and the point on this molar. But based on the fact that those points are the may, may not be accurately selected by the operator, and based on the fact that those points, even if they are accurately positioned on the tooth or on that aspect of the anatomy, those positions could have changed during the course of treatment. So we get a reasonable level of superimposition here. What we're aiming for really is, is this kind of mottled or marbled effect around where we expect the data uh, or the, uh, the, 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 the anatomy to have remained stable. In this case here, we can see it's gold re relating to the, uh, the reference case on the inside and on the outside, it's green. That means one of two things. One is that the case well, the arch was expanded somewhat during the course of treatment or secondly it could mean that the cases have not been aligned correctly so we need to be very conscious of, of what we see on screen and how we interpret that. So 
I'm going to reset the case. I'm going to go back to a dual view and we see the cases as they were to start with. Now I'm going to return to a surface one point view. What this means is we can select a single landmark, just one discrete landmark in an area on the arch that we believe is reliable and stable. This is our center point of alignment really or some discrete landmark that we can select. So we like to pick a point on the palatal rugae because that works well. Now clicking and dragging, I use my left mouse button, I can paint an area on the model. I'm confident in this case that this area of the arch of the palate is stable. It's stable pre and post treatment. It has, hasn't changed or if it has it's only by a very very small degree. I'm saying to the software forget about everything else that's going on out there. Use this point and use this area and do your alignment based on that. Now I can change that area if I wish. I can make it oops, I can make it slightly bigger. I can make it slightly smaller or as I just illustrated I can invert it as well. So I've just painted on this area and I'm going to hit preview. Once I click on preview the software has a little bit more work to do. It's got more data to analyze. It's got more data to use uh, as, a, as a surface area for uh, superimposition. It reorientates the post treatment case or the compare case. We go back into a single view and now we can see that we've got a lot of this mottled or marbled effect going on here around the area where we said to the software this is it this is the area that we want to keep and maintain and this is the, the area of commonality and once we've done that you can now see that everywhere else around the arch is accurately and reliably showing where the uh, the, the differences have occurred and all going well. The differences that we see on screen are purely down to changes in tooth position, changes in the shape of the arch as a result of the orthodontic treatment. And once we're happy with that we can click on done and then we can go in and use some of the other tools, the measurement tools within the software. So for example we've got a cross-sectional view. Uh, let's just take an occlusal view and you can see we've got a cross, cross a plane slicing through the models in a sagittal manner and then the software presents to us the cross-sectional view and the profile of the two arches at that particular position and what's really interesting about that is around the area of the palate where we defined as being stable we are seeing that it is quite stable there's a lot of deviation with the with the incisors. There's a lot of deviation based on the base because well that's uh, not not very not anatomical detail so we would expect some variation there. So it's we're seeing some stability around the palatal area and we're seeing some variation around the incisors. So that's a nice reassurance for us that the software has done a nice reliable and accurate uh, superimposition. We can do the same on the lower arch using identical tools just a different icon and of course on a lower arch we don't have a palette to act as a, a stable point so we might opt to go for um, three discrete landmarks uh, uh, two posterior points and a central point around the anterior region we try and get the same positioning on both cases and that will give us some level of of alignment we also have a difference map which is a color-coded map we click on the icon let the software do its little bit of processing and the software then presents us a color-coded map showing us what kind of deviation we have across the arch. And of course, as we go up the scale, as we go down the scale from a positive and a negative uh, zero, um, uh, uh, differential um, from a zero point, the colors get more intense and more dark. And we get, what, we, what those colors represent are the shortest distance from a point on one arch to the closest point on the opposing arch and it's quite important that we um, consider that because a, a that's r really it's not it's not representing the, the distance or the displacement of a single point for, uh, pre and post treatment if we do want to get that kind of information the best thing for us to do is click on done come out of the color coded map and just go into a simple 
point to point measurement. So we'll click on our uh, tape measure tool and we can just take our uh, point to point measurement, straight line point to point. We want to see how much that cusp tip um, has moved by on that on that canine. And we can see that the total displacement as a result of the course of treatment is 4.06 millimeters. That's giving us much more useful information um, rather than just some um, some pretty colors. So I hope that that was useful to you. I hope you found uh, you learned something from this clip and give it a go. Have a try yourself. Um, hopefully it will work out for you just fine. And of course, if you have any problems, you know where you can find us and we'll be more than happy to help you out. When using the model set compare functionality within the software, it has been reported to us from, from some customers and um, that they have some issues when trying to paint on the area uh, that they want to use for superimposition. And it seems that it's uh, it's obviously a very graphic intensive um, process and the, the, the feeling is that it's actually it's a graphics card issue rather than a software issue um, as such. So unfortunately I cannot uh, replicate the problem with this uh, computer and none of our computers, we, we cannot do it on any other computers either because we have um, graphics cards which are of a suitable specification. But let, I'm going to try and talk through what the problem is, um, how it um, how it shows itself, but also what the workaround is, um, most importantly, and, and how we can reassure you that even though you may not see what you're expecting to see, the results are actually the correct results. So, um, as I say, it's, it, this problem is associated when painting onto a surface. So it tends to happen um, when we're doing the surface one point or surface three point um, functionality. So I'm going to go with a, a surface one point. I select my landmark. I select a landmark on the, the arch that I'm happy is, is constant and, and is stable and reliable. And the next step is to paint the area. Now the software is allowing me to paint the area. I click and drag and I paint happy. I'm just going to paint in this area and say to the software, yep, this is where I want to work with. The problem that some users have experienced is that that area does not actually appear to be painted. The reality is that it is actually being painted. So what we suggest to customers is go ahead and just paint a little area. Even though you may not see this red area, it is still being painted. Once we click on preview, even though we may not have seen the painted area, the software, the model will still reposition itself. And if we go to a single view, it, this models will still appear to be superimposed and aligned in the way that we expect, i.e. this marbled or mottled effect around the, the defined area. Typically, once we hit done, and if we go back into the uh, the registration process and go back to a, a single view, or sorry, go back to a dual view, even if there is an issue with your graphics card, for the majority of cases, in fact, as far as I recall, for all of our cases where we've experienced this problem, at this point, the software will present the painted area. So we can review the painted area if we're not happy with it, we can reduce it somewhat and we can repaint in an additional area. We click on preview and the software will allow us to do what we need to do. The software will do the alignment based on on the area that we have selected whether it's um, in this case this new area this mo modified area that I've selected. So we acknowledge it is a problem the software developers are working on it trying to identify what exactly causes it but as I say it's it tends to be related to the particular graphics card that is in your computer but I hope now that we've shown clearly how we can work around that and still do accurate and reliable superimpositions with just an extra couple of clicks of course if it's not working out for you please please let us know at support at esmdigitalsolutions.com drop us a quick email explain the problem and we'll certainly take care of you and hopefully get you to a point where it works out for you.